100% agree. People are just don't accept it. <laughs> DeRozan is the perfect example to if Jordan played in today's NBA. You know, I used to think that people were trolling with this take, and sometimes I still think they are. It gets kind of difficult to tell. But based on this thread I was on, I have probable cause to believe they were being serious, and this, this is always just wrong. The DeRozan comparison literally spawns out of the fact that they were both athletic and both use mid-range. However, that comparison always ignores that MJ has one of the highest recorded verticals in NBA history. It's listed at around 46, that is more than most people's favorite jumper today including the Marta Rosen. MJ was a better defender than DeRozan would ever hope to be, and his offensive bag was just way deeper. Like, you, you, did the footage exist, fam? DeRozan averaged 27 points per game one time in his entire career. If we were trying to be somewhat on base with the comparison today, most people say Kawhi Leonard, because Kawhi's mid-range game is very MJ-like. It mirrors a lot of the stuff we saw from both MJ and Kobe, and he's an elite defender. But even then, MJ definitely has Kawhi in the athleticism. He's got Kawhi on quite a bit, honestly, but I could never understand how people could watch Kawhi Leonard dominate in today's NBA and don't think that MJ could play. And if the comparison that's just supposed to get us somewhere in the ballpark is Kawhi Leonard, a top 5 player in today's NBA, one of the best players in the NBA, then I think that about wraps this whole thing up. I also never understood how Michael Jordan came back with the Washington Wizards. It was a good 3 years after he was done with the Bulls, so he comes back at around like what, age 37, age 38, and still puts up 22 a game. And he goes on to do this against a lot of guys that would go on to be our favorite players throughout the 2000s and even a little bit through the early 2010s. Guys that LeBron James would go to play against, MJ was literally playing against that last season and he showed that he could play. And that wasn't even prime Jordan. Anyways, after that little tirade, I'm going to assume that the DeRozan thing is to be funny, but just in case. Nigga, what? Like I said, it's a team game and you're saying Chris Paul's way didn't work where Steph's did. Wrong because it's two different system and teams. You're talking about switch his style to fit teammates. CP3 literally makes his teammates better while Steph doesn't. Oh my god, here, we're back here again. A year later, here we are. This tweet is brought to you by he doesn't average a lot of assists Twitter. Also, shout out to the other sponsor, I don't understand off-ball movement Twitter. How do people fail to grasp that you can make your teammates better without averaging 10 assists or throwing flashy passes? I don't know, bro. We don't need to go through this whole thing again. We really don't. This whole thing is making my brain do a backflip to tell Westbrook to stop caring about stats and actually win without KD for once. I mean, he did have one of the greatest individual seasons ever and won MVP with a team that everyone thought was going to the lottery, but continue. Has KD won on his own? Nope. Nobody really has. Also continue. No, so relax. If Westbrook would have went to that same Golden State team, he could have easily won rings too. Ooh, a Steph Curry and Russell Westbrook backcourt. You know, uh, honestly, when I originally read this, I was more thrown off by the replies and the whole thing down here talking about how it doesn't matter that Demarcus Cousins couldn't win with them because Russ is better. Although that it, there's really there's really a lot more to it than just Demarcus Cousins didn't win with the Warriors. But then the ridiculousness of put Russ on that Warriors team and they never lose a game. That's probably the crime here because Westbrook obviously is nowhere near a better fit for the Warriors than Durant. This is extremely basic NBA 2K speak down here. However, I actually gave this a little bit more thought than I should have for a Twitter please video because I'm thinking about Russell Westbrook playing without a true center on Houston and how he was looking more successful playing with the most shooters he's ever played with. And then you put him at the shooting guard position with Golden State, which puts Klay Thompson at small forward. You know, Steph and Klay are both so good at off ball movement that this would actually maybe still end up winning a championship. I'm more just thinking about the defensive end of the ball and having a 6 3 shooting guard. I don't know, man. All I know is that this is a NBA 2K thread. Good thing they got Scotty. He wouldn't have ever won a chip. Yep, a lot of players would not have won a chip without another great teammate. Thanks for that. It's true. Michael Jordan has a career win percentage of 73% with Pippen. Yep, he played a hell of a lot of his career with the guy. He has a career win percentage of 49% without Pippen. Yep, those few years with the crack circus before Pippen were pretty brutal. MJ has won capital, one playoff game, capital, without Pippen. Yeah, man, a whopping total of, wait for it, three playoff series, all against elite teams without any adequate help. Yeah, I guess that would have been difficult for a lot of players. Parentheses, Pippen has won 19 without MJ. Yeah, Pippen did go on to play quite a bit of basketball without him. You know, after Jordan retired, goes on to play with Charles Barkley, Hakeem Olajuwon, a great Portland team. It sure seems like Pippen had a lot more opportunity than MJ to play in the playoffs after they were apart. I mean, it would make sense. Pippen led MJ in every major statistic bar in all of their rings. Wow, it sounds like they played the role they were supposed to play, doesn't it? Good thing one was able to pick up all the dirty work while the other was able to be an elite scorer. Sounds like the perfect ingredients for a great team and a dynasty. A lot of good basketball. I mean, it's not like MJ had an incredible streak as a point guard or anything one time and showed that he absolutely could do that if asked that uh, oh wait he did that oh well then uh mj having pippen would be like lbj having kd or Kawhi. okay if we wanted to be in the ballpark 
Because Pippen was a great defender and could also provide his own offense, maybe we would say it'd be like LBJ having Kawhi. MJ having Pippen is not, however, like LeBron James having Kevin Durant. What? Most other stars in history have never had a player that could score as easily or bend the defense as well as Kevin Durant, including Michael. <laughs> what? Lordy, the gas that people give when they want to discredit it, great. And, and look, look at this, the Bulls won 55 games without MJ, albeit, I, I guess, it has to be because of the Twitter character limit that we're not going to mention that that was actually a slightly different Bulls team, different players, different pieces, but oh, okay. Give LeBron a team who can win 55 games without him, instead of a lottery team, and he'd go 6-0 too, yeah, because we all know LeBron James has never played with anything but lottery teams. He's never had great teammates. Definitely never played with other players in the finals that were also worthy of finals MVP. This is also so weird because I would say, like, most of the teams LeBron has played on in his career, he basically becomes a system and all the pieces around him are specifically to support him. And so when he's not there and the team does poorly, all of a sudden everybody acts like that's some big surprise. It's it's like having a car and you take the engine out and you still expect the car to run. Like how do you have a team that is so dependent on drive and kick and then when you take the main driver out and it doesn't work, now that's some big indictment. Of course it doesn't fucking work. Somebody please get the context gun out on this thread. This guy, keep in mind, he, he was a supposedly trainer. And and he's having a conversation with Evan Turner. But the main part down here is, I can't jump on the bandwagon only because nobody has seen athleticism like MJ's in the 90s. I mean, we still rarely see it, but go off. Nowadays, he's a Terrence Ross. Yes, he is a Terrence Ross who has a vertical, a whole 10 inches below Michael's. Ross these days is also like a role-playing three-point shooter. Guys, I, I just want to just put emphasis on this. This is a, this is a trainer saying this. <laughs> Next, MJ is an all-time great, but he got Ben Simmons treatment for 10 straight seasons, which is perfectly fine because he was so good at other things, but it's not enough to put you above Harden. Hey, do y'all remember when we were watching The Last Dance on Sunday and they were talking about the Sun series where they were guarding MJ in the paint and he absolutely didn't just destroy them from mid-range, it, it was all drives? Because yeah, according to this theory of 10 straight seasons, that would mean in the finals when he was averaging 40, guys were hanging off of him because he couldn't actually shoot and he had no offensive go-to moves. How how, how do you end up being this wrong and misinformed with footage today? I, I just never get it. Like, we're gonna ignore the part about James Harden. That, whatever, bro. You can go look at footage from the 90s. It exists. It is clear. It is crisp. Even though they got our boy Dawkins, there's still footage out there. You can go look at it. You can inform yourself before putting these type of things on a public forum. It's possible. On the subject of MJ's competition, Prime Kemp, more like Lazy Kemp, Peyton was a damn rookie. Ewing had no knees in the 90s. Shaq and Penny actually beat the Bulls, but then MJ told management to get him more help, Dennis Rodman. Magic wasn't in his prime anymore, and that definitely wasn't the Showtime Lakers. Okay, uh, yeah, Sean Kemp when they played the Bulls in the finals. That definitely was not the Lazy Kemp from the Orlando Magic and the Cleveland Cavaliers. Easily checkable. Hayden was absolutely not a rookie when they played in the finals. Very easily checkable. Ewing had no knees in the 90s, so you're just saying that the 90s came and Ewing wasn't a top center and a top player anymore. So his greatest day is all his best basketball. The legend of Ewing came between the years of 1986 and 1989. Okay, check. Shaq and Penny actually beat the Bulls. Yeah, they did when MJ returned like some way through the season. Wasn't in his best shape and he still went off that series. But yeah, Magic got him that year. But then MJ told management to get him more help. Dennis Rodman. Actually, there was a very nice segment on how the Bulls acquired Dennis Rodman on the last dance. There was a very clear reason they got him for basically pennies on the dollar. But okay, we'll go with MJ crying to management. I, I don't know the sources there, but okay. Magic Johnson was not in his prime anymore and that definitely wasn't the Showtime Lakers. Yeah, no, that, that was not the Showtime Lakers at all. But Magic also wasn't washed. Also, just an aside on MJ's competition, I, I heard a really good point somewhere that there's always this thing about he didn't play the Celtics or the Lakers or the Pistons in their primes, or he didn't beat them in their primes anyways. But that argument also ignores the amount of teams in the Eastern Conference like Reggie Miller's Pacers or Patrick Ewing's Knicks that probably would have gone on to be a lot more legendary had they been able to beat the Bulls and actually win a championship. But they never did because they couldn't beat the Bulls. People also ignore the part where the Bulls came back and swept the Shaq and Penny magic, but narratives. And finally, on the topic of LeBron James championships. Don't forget the asterisks for the lockout short in 2012 season, the NBA canceling the Chris Paul trade, and the Draymond suspension. LeBron hasn't won a championship without an asterisk. None. Okay, well, the 2012 lockout definitely wasn't ideal, but everybody had the same situation in the same playing field. Nobody was in a perfect situation, and then they came back in 2013 and beat the San Antonio Spurs. That didn't have an asterisk at all. Like, you can't even argue that they had one. And even in 2016, yes, there's injury and there's suspension. And I do, I'm on the side that believes that the Warriors do win the championship if none of that happens. But 
but also they were still down 3-1 and then still had to win a game 7 on Golden State's home floor. Like regardless of the circumstances, that's still hard and amazing as shit. Besides, there's no asterisk on that because you can go back and look at an injury that changed nearly every season and a lot of the playoffs as well. Damn bro, I realize why I don't do Twitter police a lot. It's actually a mental strain to go scroll through these same exact contextless arguments made the same exact way every single day. So yeah, if you want to see more of these, you help me out. Send me terrible takes in the DM, hashtag Twitter police on social media, I do sift through those and try to find bad takes. Because if I have to scroll through Twitter for hours one more time just to find that MJ was 1-9 without Scotty, that's it. <laughs> I'm out bro. Hit like, <laughs> hit like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I'll see y'all on the next one.